Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial. And in this video we're going to be looking at how to create views with schema binding in SQL Server. So we'll jump straight into it, head over to SQL Server Management Studio and go through some examples. Okay, you've joined me in SQL Server Management Studio. For this video I'm going to be using the AdventureWorks 2019 database which is readily available online. You don't have to use this specific database to follow along with the video. It's not actually the data that we're going to be looking at. It's actually the structure of views that is more important. So as long as you've got a database with some tables that you can use, that would be absolutely fine. And I'm going to be using the sales.sales .sales order header table. And what I'm going to be doing is later on in the video, I'm actually going to be dropping some columns from this table. So to start with, I'm actually just going to create a copy of this table to use uh, within the video. So I'm just going to check if this exists. I'm just going to call it sales order header copy. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to actually change uh, the, the, the database. Um, other options would be to take a backup and then drop columns and, and restore, but uh, because we're just ma making some small changes to one table, I'm just going to do a select all into a copy where I can freely drop columns and then once I'm finished I can clean up and drop the table later. So I'm just going to select all columns into a new table called sales order header copy. Uh, and that's going to be from sales.sales .sales order header table. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this query now. So we've got a new table created, 31,465 rows inserted. I'm going to open up a new query window because we might come back to that later. Uh, and we'll just run a select all from a new table. And at this point you may get uh, some squiggly lines to indicate that IntelliSense doesn't recognize that object name. And if you just press Control shift r and wait a second or two, that should refresh the IntelliSense and it now recognizes that as an object. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start creating a very simple view. Um, so I'm just going to build a select from this table. Um, and again, the, the columns you select in here are not of significant importance, but I'm just going to select a few uh, columns, sales order number, customer ID, and total due. So I'm going to create a view as if I just want to select uh, those columns. I'm going to call it sales VW sales header. So I'm just crea creating a very simple view which is just selecting a subset of columns from this copy of a table I've created. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that query now. So we've got that view and I'll just open up another new query window just so it looks a bit cleaner and um, we'll just have a look at that view so sales.vw sales header and again just press control shift r wait a second or two and your error line should be removed so we've got this this view now so we're able to select these these columns from this view so now we're going to move on to, to schema binding, how that works, how we implement it within a views and what it actually does. Um, but to start with, we'll, we'll go through a demonstration of, of what would happen if we, if we don't use schema binding. So we can see we've got this view that selects sort of a subset of columns. So, and this is why I said it was probably a good idea to create a, a copy of the table. So we're just going to go ahead and drop a column. Uh, let's drop, drop column sales order number. So we're just going to drop that column from our table. And 
we know that column is part of our view definition so we want to have a look at what happens when we drop that column and we then select everything from that view again so now at this point we get an error uh, and it says here could not view could not use view or function sales dot vw sales header because of binding errors so we're selecting a column within the view that no longer exists in the table so how do how do we protect against that how do we prevent those errors and these errors typically come across when you're you're first designing um, a database or you're adding tables to a database and you want to build views on top of them to make it easier to understand for users and I've seen this error quite uh, quite a lot but how do we prevent it what can we implement uh, and that's where schema binding comes in so we're going to change our, our view definition so as the views already been created we'll change it to alter view and then under alter view and the view name we're just going to add with schema binding and the and with schema binding is specifying sorry what we must do first of all uh, is just recreate this table so that's why I'm just checking if the table exists if it does I'm going to drop it and then I'm going to recreate the table so we're effectively starting again so that's why I had that within the initial query window and that should allow us now to create our view with schema binding so what schema binding is doing is saying within the view definition do not allow any changes to the underlying table or tables that could affect the definition of this view or this view being able to execute. We'll just check we can run this select here. Yep, yeah, we can run the select okay. So if we've got create, so this will be create or alter. It's a view, uh, object name, which is sales.vw sales header. And then we have with schema binding before, as, and then our definition of the view. So if we go ahead and execute this now, we've now created a view with schema bindings. We've now instructed the database, do not allow any changes to this table that could affect this view from being executed. So if we go ahead and try to drop that column again, which now exists again because we recreated the table, uh, we'll just select from the view first of all actually so we've got we can see there we've got all our columns back and again we're going to try and drop the sales order number from the underlying table we'll then get an error at this point to say you cannot drop this column because one or more objects access this column so we're seeing here the ob the object vw sales header is actually dependent on this column now you can the way to drop it if you needed to would be to go back and change the view definition but it's an extra layer of protection that prevents your views from being broken and a lot of people think that schema binding should be implemented as standard and perhaps it should perhaps it should be the other way that schema binding should be implemented as a standard practice but can be turned off if needs be what we'll also do though is demonstrate that with schema binding we'll only protect the columns within the definition of the view so if we have a look at dropping a, another column tax amount which is just called TAXAMT which is not part of the view definition but is part of the table we can see we can still drop that column so as it's not part of the view definition that doesn't have that layer of protection if you was to create a view that said select all then you wouldn't be able to modify any columns at all but what would happen if we were to make a simple change so let's have a look within this view definition if I said sales order ID plus one as sales order ID so we've now got we're changing the view 
uh, and we do refer to that column from the underlying table but it's an actually an expression that we're we're building up so let's go ahead and alter the view let's select from the view we can see it's not ordered but we can see we have got plus one let's see if we're now able to drop that column so it was sales order ID let's go ahead and run that and execute it and still it still stores that we have a dependency on that column so we can we still can't drop that column from the table without removing it from the view definition really hope you have enjoyed that video on schema binding let me know in the comments below have you experienced similar issues with views before and you're looking for an option of how to protect it check out the other videos on my channel subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded thanks a lot for watching